remains still within a community, I think one thing that's always lacking, when we look back at the Prophet and how he built his community, right? There was one element that he built that was you know, so critical to the movement, to the da'wah, to everything that he did. And that, that movement was a brotherhood and sisterhood. Not just brotherhood and sisterhood as we know brotherhood and sisterhood. Because our brotherhood and sisterhood is, let's do an event where there's games and invite the brothers, and that's brotherhood. That's not brotherhood. That's not brotherhood. That's not sisterhood. Sisterhood and brotherhood is that if I know you're in a problem, I will give I will give myself to you to alleviate you of that problem. That's brotherhood. That's brotherhood. That's sisterhood. That if I get a call, I'm leaving everything, I'm dropping everything, I'm coming to your aid. If you don't have food, I'm coming, driving to your house in the middle of the night and I'm getting you food because you're hungry. That is brotherhood. That is sisterhood. What we have, honestly, is not brotherhood, sisterhood. It's a very weak form of brother and sister. Maybe you have it with a few brothers, a few sisters, definitely. And I hope and pray that we do. But as a community, we do not have this. We do not have this concept of brother and sister. Truly like the Prophet ﷺ had with his Sahabas. And truly how they were with their community. No, we don't. And that's one of the key elements that's missing in our community. That's why we're not really going anywhere. Yeah, everyone's doing their own kind of subset movements. And everyone's doing their own thing. But as a community, we're all disjointed. Right? Because we don't really have that, first of all, beyond everything, we don't have that care, that actual brotherhood for one another. That actual care that you are a Muslim, you are a, a slave of Allah, you are someone who obeys Allah and because of that I love you for the sake of Allah, because I'm willing to give everything for your sake, to help you and to alleviate you. We don't have that kind of commonality. Um, and and it, it's one of the things that shaitan works on. And it's one of the things that shaitan, how he breaks down the community. And this is one of the ways that he breaks down the community, is by allowing people to, uh, by easily backbiting, by easily tail carrying, by easily, you know, allowing people to reveal the faults of other Muslims instead of concealing them. Because it builds resentment, it builds, it builds hatred, it builds anger, right, from one brother to another, from one community to another, from one, you know, uh, organization to another organization. And it leads to a broken down community, really. It really does. Um, yeah, and another thing is that the Prophet ﷺ said that the, that the honor of a Muslim is sacred. The honor of a Muslim is sacred. What does the word sacred mean? In layman's term, we use this word sacred. What does it really mean? You can't touch it. You can't touch it. Okay, what else? It's holy as sin. Okay, it's, it's like, it's almost, yeah, like, holy, <laughs> right? What else? Anything else that sacred comes to mind that what does that really mean? Like, don't mess with it, right? Like you said, don't touch it, like, don't mess with it. It's like, this is something sacred, you don't touch it, you don't tamper with it, you don't, you know, you know indulge your, you know, things with it, you keep it as holy as possible in a jewel case, you keep it pristine and crystal and clear and clean. You do not mess around with it. This is the honor of a Muslim brother and a sister. This is the honor. And every time we backbite someone, every time we tail carry someone, every time we make fun of another brother, every time we do these things, we are tampering with something that is sacred in the sight of Allah. Just like the haram, just like the masjid that Ibrahim is sacred, just like the honor of a Muslim is sacred. And every time we do these kind of things, we are tampering with something that is so sacred in the sight of Allah. And we have to ask ourselves what we're truly doing, right, to aid this community, to aid the Muslims on this campus, and even just here. What are we truly doing? Right, because uh, doing events and all this stuff is great. It really is. It's really important. But don't forget to work on the Muslims themselves. And that requires, that doesn't require events. That requires a person's heart and another person's heart. It requires you to actually care about your Muslim brother and sister. It requires you to talk to them and ask them and communicate them with them. It requires you to share their, their, their grief and their problems and their difficulties. That's what's required. And once you have that, then you have a community. Then you have a group of people who are willing to do things for the sake of Allah. And they're willing to be support systems for each other. Until we don't have that, really, it's we won't really accomplish what we want to accomplish. Yeah, we'll do it, but not in the way that you know we've been taught to really do it, and how we really should be building a community. 
it gives just some side points, inshallah. Um, we'll end there, 7.30 exactly, alhamdulillah. Um, uh, next class, inshallah, we'll touch upon the latter half of the hadith, which is talking about knowledge and the deeds and actions, inshallah. And we'll end this, this short class on that note, inshallah. Uh, we end by saying, Subhanaka. Subhanaka. <coughs> Allahumma. Allahumma. Wa bihamdik. Wa bihamdik. Nashhadu la ilaha illa ant. Nashhadu la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka. Nastaghfiruka. Wa natubu ilayk. Wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaykum.